Welcome to part of our CES 2022 coverage. We'll be making short videos like this through CES to keep you up to date on the latest developments. Hit subscribe and the notification bell to make sure you see the moment we post a video. Like most outlets, we're covering CES virtually this year, which also means that we spent a chunk of change on getting ready to go, then on not going. So if you'd like to support the channel, check out Patreon and our other links below. There are a few common types of presentation at CES. There's the product announcement, where you're seeing the reveal of a product that's either planned to come to market some vague time in the future, or coming to market now-ish. These kinds of presentations generally have some kind of relationship with reality, although that relationship can be a little bit tenuous or pretty optimistic, like Python's, for example. Then there's the dry-as-dust financial and sometimes technological presentations. Hiding in these is often stuff that's fascinating, but they're usually so long and suck up so much time for the 30 seconds of, huh, you're doing that, that's fascinating, that we often end up just covering an hour of press conference in a few seconds. Then there's the what the hell events. Not necessarily bad, because they can speak to how a company is viewing the future, although often we're talking about a future that's decades away. And decades away in only a few employees' heads. But they can be somewhat unexpected, and they can tell you a little bit about what the company intends to do. We've seen a few of these, mainly from Toyota, Hyundai and Honda over the past few years, with flying cars, autonomous cubes flitting hither and thither, and smart cities forming a huge part of the standard CES experience and this year's Hyundai event was definitely in that genre. The keynote focused on what it termed a quote, holistic view of mobility, with, I quote, unlimited mobility of things. As an aside, we were also lucky enough to get invited to a Q&A with Hyundai and Boston Dynamics, which Hyundai acquired a controlling interest in back in June of 2021, as a follow-up. So this video is in two chunks covering both the keynote and the Q&A. First up, the keynote, and what Hyundai is up to as it expands its concept of mobility. Hyundai's keynote was very much an exercise in blue sky thinking about the future roles that robots and autonomy will play, not just for cars, but also in other arenas. As part of this, Hyundai demonstrated a technology that it referred to as plug and drive, or P&D. Essentially a wheel stroke controller that can be used to turn anything into a wheeled robot. That can be combined with another component, drive and lift, or DNL, to provide mobility to an unlimited range of objects. To quote Hyundai, the PND modular platform is an all-in-one mobility solution that combines intelligent steering, braking, in-wheel electric drive, and suspension hardware. The single wheel unit uses a steering actuator for infinite wheel rotation, meaning it can turn 360 degrees. In addition, LiDAR and camera sensors allow a PND enabled object to move autonomously. And that was a significant chunk of the underlying plan. Make everything into a movable, controllable object. Make offices and homes reconfigurable, make furniture move if you need it to, and all of this, along with the robots that we'll come to in a moment, is part of the metaverse. Yes, I swore I would avoid uttering the word metaverse as long as possible, not least because it's a word which seems to be covering for waving your arms around and going something, something VR, something internet. But in this case, the event focused in part on using a digital twin, fundamentally an avatar in a virtual environment, or a robot in a local or distant physical environment to remain connected. One of the examples was petting or feeding your dog while you're away from home with a robot. And as is now pretty common for one of these types of keynote presentations, there was a lot of emphasis on smart cities and of pods which ferry people around either autonomously, either individually or as an autonomous tech type bus, and these pods could potentially feature VR environments, or you guessed it as they called it, the metaverse. Okay, so there was a lot more of this kind of content, but the dive into what this actually means for Boston Dynamics and Hyundai did put some flesh on the bones of why Hyundai chose this topic for its keynote. 
And um, before we get started, we're not going to dive into the ethics of Boston Dynamics Robotics and the use of robots in military and police roles. That's a very long conversation, and it's not one we have time for here. Hyundai, or Hyundai Motor Group to give it its proper name, doesn't just build cars. It has engineering and civil engineering divisions. It has fingers in the pies of machine tools, logistics, information technology, and even a hotel and resort, amongst other things. And so it's perhaps unsurprising that it's looking at a bigger picture than just mobility for cars and trucks. It's looking at the blue sky stuff we just discussed, and also the less blue sky stuff of how manufacturing and logistics can be done better. So while Hyundai and Boston Dynamics are working together on identifying areas where one's technology can support the other, for example, using Boston Dynamics stretch robot to assist with logistics on production lines and in factories, something that Boston Dynamics regards as the entry point for robots into logistics, that seems to be something that is somewhat in the air. The two companies have only been joined, really, since the middle of 2021, which, as I'm sure we're all rather painfully aware, hasn't been the best of years for getting big teams together for discussions. So both were at pains to make clear that the interlinking between the two companies is still at early stages, and still very much a work in progress. That being said, the question of whether the kinds of perception the Boston Dynamics team have developed would be useful in an automotive environment did come up. Probably not, is the current thought, mainly because the structured nature of what the cars deal with and the environments that the Boston Dynamics robots have been taught to deal with doesn't have as much in the way of similarities as you might expect. But those perception models might be useful for the kind of autonomous pods and devices that may roam the factory of the future. And it's possible that as Hyundai continues its journey of electrification, and apparently making robots out of everything, that the production lines of the future will be tuned to be more compatible with multifunction rather than the fairly single function robots of today. On the opposite side of the equation when it comes to what might be useful, despite Hyundai's Mobed mobility platform's wheeled nature, it turns out that the quadruped motion algorithms were found to be useful. And adaptive automotive suspension apparently has, quote, leg-like characteristics, which may mean that techniques used in biped and quadruped motion find their way into future vehicles. So to sum up, things that you might expect to translate don't, and things that you might not expect to translate do. On the Boston Dynamics side, the skills and manufacturing knowledge gained from joining with Hyundai are hoped to improve the manufacturing process for its robots and improve robots' longevity. Amongst other things, obviously. So that's the wild ride that was Hyundai and Boston Dynamics' keynote. It's certainly going to be a while before we see any real fruit from this collaboration, and whether we'll ever see the autonomous pod future that many automakers seem fond of, well, I mean, I'll leave that for you to decide. That's it for this update. Keep that notification bell tapped to keep up to date with our CES coverage, because we'll be back with more soon. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts below. Or join our free Discord chat room. There's a link below to that as well. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. That one's for longer takes. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bodor, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. Feeling left out? You can join Patreon at the link below, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, and our cool swag store. Links are below to all of that. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.